Howdy folks. In this video, we're going to be walking through a year-to-date measure, a DAX measure more specifically. And the purpose of this video is not to build the world's most bulletproof year-to-date measure, uh, but rather to build a very simple year-to-date measure, or at least show you how a simple year-to-date measure works at a somewhat mechanical level. The idea being that, A, you can understand some of the internals of the DAX engine, of how it you know works on a mechanical basis, and with that information, you're going to be able to uh, understand some non-trivial DAX measures and hopefully build your own as well. So with that, let's get started, shall we? So to start off with, we have a couple things. We have a very simple data model over here where we've got both a sales table and a calendar table, sales and cal. And for each uh, sale on our sales table, we've got the amount and we've also got this date F key or date foreign key, right? And if you'll notice over here in the calendar table, we have uh, a year and a date, but we've got this date primary key, right? Or date PK, okay? And uh, the way this is going to work is the primary key and the foreign key are going to form a relationship between these two tables, such that for any given row, like let's say, I don't know, this row right here, we could say, all right, this sale, the, the date it happened on is this 171231. So we know that that corresponds to 171231 up here, which is to say uh, December 31st, 2017. Okay, that's how this relationship works, right? This is this becomes sort of a, a lookup table to the sales or uh, table. Okay, this is a fact table. This is a dimension table, or if you prefer, this is a date table, and this is a lookup table. We look up values here in our calendar table for individual sales, right? It's on the one side of one in many relationship. Okay, enough about that. Uh, so we've got our basic data model over here. Right over here, we've got this pivot table where we have all the days from our data model here on rows. And for each day, we've got this calculation, this uh, MYTD or measure year to date, right? And the definition for it is right over here. But before we get into that, let's just sort of look at what we, what the numbers are, what we would expect. For each day, we've got uh, not the sales for that day, but rather the sales for all the days uh, in the current year through that day, right? So for here, for 12-31-2017, you've got uh, sales for all the days in 2017 through that day. So it's uh, this day and this day, right? If you look at this guy right here, it's going to be the first and nothing else, right? But if you look at this one right here, it's going to be the second and the first, but not the 31st because that's in the previous year. So it's the current year through the current day of the cell, right? That's what the year, that's what year to date means, okay? So uh, that's what you'd expect. And if we look over here at the measure, here's uh, at, a, at a high level how we get it, right? So for each cell, what we end up doing is uh, we use these variables to say, hey, for that cell, let's go get the last day in that cell, like the max of that day, of the date, right? For that, for each cell, let's get the last year, whatever the last year is, right? And then we're going to go get a, a fresh copy of the calendar table, ignoring any filters. That's what all is going to let us do, right? And we're going to only keep the days that are uh, less than the cells uh, date, right? Less than or equal to the cells date, but also equal to the year, right? So it's uh, year to date, right? Here's the year part. Here's the to date part. Now, if you don't understand all this stuff, that's okay. You don't have to, right? Oh, I should say, uh, once we get that calendar table, we're then going to say, hey, go get the sum of sales as if we're looking at just those days right there. Uh, I, I was saying, if you don't understand all of this, that's just fine. You really don't have to. Um, but we're going to be walking through this, and hopefully by the end of it, even if this looks kind of like gobbledygook right now, you'll sort of be able to look back at it and say, okay, I sort of see what it's doing, okay? A couple notes, right? Uh, the all function is going to let us get a copy of a table bypassing the active or current filter context, which is to say a non-filtered copy. So uh, here I ask for the calendar table, right? and because I'm wrapping in an all, I'm going to ignore whatever the current filter context is. Normally I would get a, a copy of the calendar table looking through a filter context or getting a, a view of it or a filtered view of it, but here I'm going to get the entire thing, right? That's what the all is going to let us do. And this uh, double ampersand, this is the and, right? What this lets us do is it lets us uh, take two tests and return a true if both of the tests return true, right? So for each day in our calendar table, we're going to perform this test and this test, and we're going to get a true for that day if we pass this one and this one. If we fail either of these tests, we get a false. That's what this little double ampersand means right there, okay? And uh, armed with that information, we could go ahead and get started. So let's start by considering this cell right here, right? So this is the uh, measure YTD, like sales year to date, for 12-31-2017, okay? So before we go too much further, let's just consider, you know, what we would expect. We would expect to get the sales for the 31st and the 30th. 
uh, not the first and the second because these are in the next year, but we want uh, this day and the day before because that is the year to date. So if we start stepping through um, our measure here, actually before we step through the measure, what we're going to want to do is consider the, uh, the filter context that we start off with, or what I call the natural filter context. So uh, whenever you've got a cell like this, it's going to start off with a filter context, what I call a natural filter context, right? And that's going to get popular by a couple different things, right? Uh, any values uh, on a current pivot table or matrix row or column, any, anything that's selected in any slicers on your page, if you're in Power BI, if you're in Power BI, any report or page or visual level filters, those are going to contribute to the natural filter context or any active cross filtering. So if there's some other chart somewhere, somewhere else where somebody is uh, clicked on a bar to filter down to just that thing, all of those things are going to get uh, pushed into our natural filter context or the filter context that we start with for each one of these cells. So if you look up here, well, this is uh, not that <laughs> complex or fascinating. There's really only one thing here, and that's these days on rows. Well, so all of these guys we're going to kind of ignore. The only thing we're going to care about is uh, the current pivot table or matrix row or column. Okay, So this cell uh, occurs in this row right here, which has this uh, day of 12-31-2017, which is really the date of 12-31-2017. So that's going to get populated into our filter context to form our natural filter context. So it goes, we look at uh, that day right there, and it's going to get pushed right down here, like that, okay? So uh, because this cell um, has this, uh, you know, uh, value on the current row, we end up creating in the filter context a one row, one column table for date of 12-31-2017, right? Uh, more technically, it's calendar date, 12-31-2017, but I'm kind of saving space, okay? So just think of it as, as date of uh, that value right there, okay? Well, with that, that becomes our natural filter context because we didn't have any slicers or report level filters or anything like that. It's very, very simple. For this cell, the natural filter context has a one row, one column table of that value right there, okay? So now we can start looking at our measure. So to begin, we, we, get, uh, we create a variable. We call it v last date, and it's going to have this value in it, a max of the calendar date. Well, uh, whenever, we, uh, whenever we either ask for a table explicitly or use a basic aggregation on one of its columns, such as a sum or a min or, in this case, a uh, max, uh, two things happen. We get a copy of the table. That table gets expanded, bringing in any column from the one side of a one-to-many relationship. Then that copy gets interjoined with each table in the current filter context. Okay. Now, just a heads up, uh, this, this, uh, this first part is going to be boring for the first part of the video. It becomes more interesting later on. Uh, the second part will be continue to be interesting the whole way through, okay? So uh, if we think about the calendar table, so if, we get a, if we're trying to max the calendar date, we're going to need the calendar table, right? And we don't get this calendar table over here. We get a copy of it. So we start by getting this copy, right? And we say, all right, let's uh, expand this table, bringing in any column from the one side of a one-to-many relationship. Well, if you look at our data model over here, um, this calendar table doesn't have any additional tables on the one side of a one-to-many relationship. It's got a relationship with the sales table, but that relationship is in the opposite direction, right? The sales table uh, is the many side of a one-to-many relationship, which is to say the uh, calendar table is a lookup of the sales table, but the sales table is not a lookup of the calendar table, which kind of makes sense if you think about it, right? So because of that, when we expand, uh, nothing's going to happen, right? So if we expand, well, there's no uh, uh, tables on the one side of a one-to-many relationship, so nothing happens. Boom. Okay, that was boring. Okay. Uh, more interestingly, then this copy of the table gets interjoined with each table in the current filter context, right? So the current filter context is the natural filter context because we haven't used calculate to build a new one yet, okay? So uh, we say, well, what are all the tables in the current filter context? Well, there's only one. It's this date of 12-31-2017, right? And we say, okay, well, here's our, our, our copy over here that we're working with. We're going to interjoin this with this. So if you look over here, here's date. Right? There's the date column. And we're basically only going to be keeping that value right there. Well, that is right there, 12, 31, 2017. So this is going to be the only row that we keep. Right? That inner join is going to act like a filter, keeping only that row. Okay? So if there were other tables in the filter context, we would inner join those two, but we've just got the one. And that's fine. And uh, then we're all done. And this is going to produce our view, our filter view of the table. This is what the calendar table looks like in this cell right here, unless you use calculate to sort of change the view, right? This is what it looks like, okay? So we're all done with that. This is the view of the calendar table in the current or natural filter context, okay? So uh, with that, 
we've got our, our view of the calendar table, we can now get the max of the date. Again, we're not getting the max of this date, we're getting the max of this date. Well, there's only one value right there, so the max is the same thing as uh, the only value there. 12-31-2017. So we go ahead and we're going to sort of stick that into our, our variable v last date. So our max cal date, that's this guy right there, we stick that into v last date, which I'm just going to represent right down here, okay? Now it's a hard-coded, or it's a, it's a number, right? It's not going to change throughout the rest of our of our measure. Okay, so we've got the V last date. Let's get the V last year. This is going to be a, sort of a deja vu experience. This is going to look very, very similar. Okay, so whenever you ask for a table, explicitly you're using a basic aggregation on one of its columns, sum, min, or max. Table gets expanded, bringing in any columns on the one side of a one-to-many relationship. Then it gets interjoined with each table in the current filter context. Okay. Well, we're getting the max of the calendar year, so let's go get a copy of the calendar year. There's our copy of it, right? Uh, we then say, okay, uh, are there any other tables on the one side of a one-to-many relationship with this calendar table? No, there are not, so no expansion happens. Boo, that's boring. Uh, and then we move on to step two. We then interjoin uh, every table inside of our current filter context with the copy that we've got right here. So we've only got one table, right? In our current filter context, it's date 12-31-2017. We're going to interjoin that with this, and here's the, the date column over there, right? And so 12-31-2017 is equal to that right there. So that ends up being the only row that we keep, right? So here's how we get uh, the view of the calendar table in the current or natural filter context. Again, just seeing it for the second time. The only difference this time is before we were getting the max of the date. This time we're going to get the max, I should say, the max of the year, right? So this is what the calendar table looks like in the natural filter context. The max of the date is 12-31-2017. The max of the year is just 2017, right? So we stick that right down there, right? So V last year now equals 2017. Okay, so now, a bit more interesting, we're going to get our uh, V as if calendar. And to, to start doing that, we're going to start by getting this all cal right here. Now, if you remember, I said back here that all of us get a copy of a table bypassing the active or current filter context, which is to say a non-filtered copy, okay? So you can think of this as almost like turning off the filter context for just a second, just long enough to get a copy of the calendar table, right? So now when we get this copy of the calendar table, we don't bother doing any filtering. We just get the whole darn thing. That's what all is there to let us do, okay? So now that we've got the entire calendar table, right, which is different than the, the, the calendar table we got before, which was filtered down. This is the entire thing. We can go ahead and move on to our next step, okay? So now that we've got this calendar table, the entire calendar table, we're going to add a column to it with this definition, okay? So the column, I'm just going to call it X because it's not going to stick around very long. Uh, on a row by row basis, it's going to evaluate this expression, right? And it's going to keep only the rows in the calendar table where this expression results in true, okay? So let's put those down there. Uh, right now here, it's, this is on two lines, but I'm just going to put it on a, a one line per row of our table, okay? So we're going to uh, evaluate this column right here. And here's, here's you know, the, the formula for it, right? So let's look at the uh, these bits of the formula, the V last date and V last year. Well, there's V last date and V last year right there. These are just the values that we got, you know, a couple seconds ago, okay? Those are very simple. V last date is going to be 12-31-2017. V last year is going to be 2017, right? So just like that, 12-31-2017 and 2017. It's going to be the same for each and every row. By contrast, if you look at Cal date and Cal year, uh, these are actually referring to the date and the year for each row, right? So they're going to be different each time. So for this cell right here, the calendar date is going to be 12-30-2017. For this cell right here, calendar date is going to be 1-1-2018. Like for this cell right here, the for this cell right here, the year is going to be 2017. And for this cell right here, the year is going to be 2018. So this is going to be different each time, okay? So let's just go ahead and so the date is going to be those guys right there, notice it's different each time. Each one of these corresponds to that, that to that, that to that, that to that. And if we look at the year, it's going to be the same thing. This to this, this to this, this to this, and this to this. Sorry, I'm using a trackball, right? So now we get those values right there, okay? So what we're really asking here, right? In a second, we're going to evaluate this. What we really want to know is, for each one of these days, is that day's date less than or equal to this cell's last date? And is this row's year equal to uh, this cell's year? Okay, that's what we're asking, okay? Here's sort of the cell information and here's the row information, okay? So now we ask the question, 
and we get our results. So um, is 12.31, 2017? I should say is 12.30, 2017 less than 12.31? Yes, this day is less than this day, this day is less than this day. However, this day is not less than this day, and this day is not less than this day. If we look over here to the right side of our test, well, 2017 equals 2017, 2017 equals 2017, perfect. And these are both false because 2018 does not equal 2017, 2018 does not equal 2017, okay? So uh, we only uh, return true if uh, both tests pass. So that's this one and this one. And so what we find out, right, this is the before the natural date and equal to the natural year, right? We, what we find out is the only ones that return true are the ones that uh, pass both tests, which is this row or this date and this row or this date, okay? And this makes sense, right? So if we think about this cell right here for 12-31-2017, the only days we're gonna wanna keep are days in 2017 that are before 12-31-2017. So that's uh, the 30th and the 31st. Stuff that happens in the next year we wanna get rid of, and because these are evaluated to false, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of them, right? So we only keep the true rows, we go ahead and get rid of our X column, that just disappears. And uh, because we've got this var as if calendar, right, this goes into var as if, right? So there is valid for, uh, v as if calendar, and our calendar goes right down there. That's what we do with that, okay? So now we go ahead and do uh, the last bit where we say, okay, we've got our as if calendar, and we're gonna say, let's uh, go calculate the total, or calculate the sum of the sales amount as if we're looking at these days right here. That's what this last bit will do, okay? So, to start off, calculate is going to generate a new filter context. That's what calculate does, right? It's gonna evaluate this expression right here under a new filter context. Not this one, but a one created from this one, okay? What's the difference? This V as if calendar, right? So we say, okay, let's go get our as if, as if this guy right here, because um, calculate argument two is V as if, so this table becomes our as if argument, right? So we're gonna create a new filter context. We get the old one, we make a copy of it, right? Give ourselves a little bit of room right here. And we say, okay, we wanna make a copy of it, but we're gonna modify it uh, as if we're looking at these dates. This is gonna be our overwrite of whatever is in, the, uh, in our copy, right? So notice uh, both in our as if and in our copy, there's a date column, right? And if there's a uh, disagreement like that, you know, you might ask the question, well, wait, is it just the 31st or is it the 30th and the 31st? Well, if, there any, if there's ever a disagreement, whatever was in there before, that basically just goes away. So it's almost like it disappears, just like that, okay? So now, this whole table right here, that gets put into our copy, right? And that becomes our altered filter context and our current filter context, right? The old one just sort of turned off for a little bit. So this filter context right here is what we're gonna evaluate this expression underneath. So when we get the sum of the sales amount, it's gonna be using this filter context to do it. This becomes the new lens through which we look in any given table, okay? So, this is the new current filter context to be used for argument one of calculate. Yep, I basically just said that. So now, we're gonna go ahead and get the sum of the sales amount. Okay, there's our familiar rules again. Whenever you ask for a table explicitly or use a basic aggregation of one of its columns, sum, min, et cetera, in this case, we're doing a sum, right? Uh, you get a copy of the table. That table gets expanded, bringing in any column from the one side of a one to many relationship. Then it gets interjoined with each table in the current filter context. Okay, so I said before that we were just gonna, uh, in the previous versions, number one was boring. In this instance, number one is kind of interesting. So let's start by getting a copy of the sales table. So we got sales table, we made a copy of it, right? Now we're going to expand it, okay? We're gonna expand this table, bringing in any column for the one side of a one to many relationship. Well, before with the calendar table, uh, the sales table wasn't on the one side of a one to many relationship. But here with the sales table, the calendar table is on the one side of a one to many relationship. So all of these columns are gonna get brought in or expanded to our copy of the sales table. What does that mean? What does that look like? Well, if you look at this first row right here, we know that the, the date foreign key, which is what the relationship is based on, uh, is 171230. So what that does is it goes, looks up 171230 and it says, okay, Based on that, I know that for the uh, for this row, the date primary key is this, right? It's a match. The date is this, and the year is this right here. Then for the next row, it says, all right, well, this is 171230. That means I know the date primary key is this, the date is this, and the year is this, because I can look it up. 171230 matches to that. If I go to the next row, 171231, well, that corresponds to this row right here. So I know for this row, 
uh, the pr date primary key is that, the date is that, and the year is that right there, right? And we keep on going down, right? And what this means is for every single row in the sales table, we now know, I mean, the primary key, that's not that interesting. Uh, and we probably could have guessed the date, but you know, uh, we now have the date and the year which we can filter on, right? So if we have any filters on year, date, or for that matter, date primary key, uh, they will now get applied. And guess what? In our altered filter context, we don't have any filters on date, foreign key, or amount, but we do have filters on year, date, and date primary key. So that expansion means that these filters are going to filter down our sales table to just be looking at these two days, okay? All right, I'm getting ahead of myself. We've gone ahead and we've done the expansion. So let's uh, let's now let's interjoin each table in the uh, current filter context with this table right here. Well, there's only one table, right? And it's that table right there. Okay. So it's got uh, a year column, a date column, and a date primary key column, right? Well, over here in our copy, there's the year, the date, and the date primary key. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and interjoin this with this. And if we look at these values, those match with uh, these right here. Those are the rows where uh, they match with this row. So this row matches with that row, and this row matches with these. You sort of get the idea. This is what's allowed um, in the sales table right here, right? So we filter down. We only keep the, those rows, right? And everything else goes away. So now this becomes our uh, filter view of the table, right? Not in the natural filter context, but here in our altered filtered context, the one that Calculate built for us, right? So this is the sales, uh, not just for the 31st, but for the 31st and the 30th, which is to say year to date. That's what we're after, okay? So this is our filtered view of the table, okay? I've got this little note down here. Step one allows any dimension columns to affect the fact table. I mentioned that a second ago. Because we've got this expansion, our um, filter right here actually affects the sales table, okay? So you've heard maybe that uh, filters will flow downstream from a dimension table to a fact table. That's true. This is the uh, mechanism which lets that happen, this expansion right here, okay? All right, so now we've got our view of the sales table in the altered filter context or uh, that was created by Calculate. So otherwise, this is what the sales table looks like from inside the first argument of Calculate, right? So if we were to look at the sales table uh, in here inside of Calculate, the first argument of it, well, it would look like this. If we were to look at it outside of Calculate, we would only be seeing the 31st. We'd only be seeing, you know, those rows right there. If we were to look at it out here in any of these very, in, you know, v last date or v last year, anywhere else in our code, it would look like uh, just the 31st because that's what the natural filter context would produce. But because we've got Calculate right here, it creates this new lens, right, that we look through. When we look through this new lens or this new filter context, we get a new view of the sales table, which is the year-to-date view of it, okay? Hope that makes sense. All right, so now that we've got uh, this year-to-date view, uh, we can do the easy stuff, which is just sum up the amount column. Okay, the sum of this column is just 120. There you go, so now we've got 120, right? Uh, now, you might think, oh, we're done. Well, we're, we're very close, we're not quite done. Uh, so Calculate's gonna finish evaluating, right? Now, this, this whole Calculate, the C to that little ending parentheses, that's going to be $120. It's actually going to reset the filter context back to the natural filter context, just in case there's any other lines of code. Now, there's no other lines of code in this particular measure, but if there was something out here, uh, it would reset it so that it could go evaluate those, right? In the old natural filter context. Uh, but alas, uh, that's it. That's the end of the expression. So this 120 gets returned to the pivot table, right? That's how we get that number up there, okay? So uh, that's that's sort of uh, that's sort of how it all works. Now let's look at uh, two other cells. And I'm not going to go quite as in depth, but I think by looking at it, maybe you'll, you'll you'll get an even more solid understanding of how all this stuff works. Let's go ahead and uh, put this away, right? And we're going to look at this cell right here, the first of 2018. Okay. So you would expect that the year-to-date calculation, well, that's going to include the days, uh, just the first, right? It's not going to include these days because that was the year before. And it's not going to include this day because that was the year after. So let's go make sure that our year-to-date calculation does just that. Maybe see how it's doing it, okay? So uh, we start with this cell. We say, well, what's the natural filter context? Well, uh, we've got this 1-1-2018 on rows, and we don't have any slicers or uh, cross filtering or anything like that. So it's basically just that guy right there, right? So it's got date of 1-1-2018. This time it's a little bit different, right? So uh, for uh, the variable v last date, well, we just get the max of the calendar date. Now, again, it's not this calendar table. It's the copy that we've got. And the copy has been filtered by this natural filter context. 
So we just get this uh, one row of, of, of the first, right? And so we ask, well, what's the, the max of the calendar date of the first? Well, it's just that one value. And it's, uh, you know, 1, 1, 20, 18. Okay, that becomes our V last date. Okay, we think of the V last year. Well, same kind of thing. We get a copy of the calendar table uh, through the lens of the, the current filter context, which is the natural filter context. We haven't used calculate to modify it. So we take the calendar table and we say, all right, let's take that copy, but filter it down to just the date of 1, 1, 2018. That gives us this right here. And we say, okay, well, what's the max year of that? Well, that's just 2018. So V last year now equals uh, 2018. Well, that's pretty easy. Okay, now we go ahead and we do our V as if calendar, right? So we go ahead and use all to get a copy of the calendar table, ignoring the current filter context. That's what all does. It gets us the this table, but ignoring um, anything in the, in the current filter context, we get the entire copy of it, right? And then we go ahead and we add our sort of X column to it, where we say, okay, for each row, see if that row's date is less than the cell's last date, and see if that row's year is equal to the cell's last year, okay? So this is the cell's last year and last date, uh, and each one of these, the cal date and cal year, correspond to the, the row's date and year. And so if we do that, we see a slightly different thing, right? So here we see that um, for these first two rows, well, 1230 and 1231, th those are in indeed less than or equal to the first of 2018. Um, so they pass this part of the test, but they're not, they don't pass this part of the test because they're uh, in the wrong year, right? These are, the, these are part of the to date, but not the year to date, because year to date says only look at the current year. So because we failed 2017 and 2018, this entire row gets a false, so we don't keep it, right? Same with this row right here. Uh, this row, we're gonna keep this uh, 1, 1, 2018 because the first is, well, it's less than or equal to the first, right? It is the first, and the year of 2018 is equal to the year of 2018, okay? So as you would expect for 1, 1, 2018, we're gonna keep uh, the day of 1, 1, 2018. If we then look at the second, well, the year part is correct because the second of 2018 is indeed in 2018, but the day part is wrong because the second is not before equal the first. So the only row we end up keeping is this one right here, okay? So that becomes our as if calendar. So now we go ahead and just sort of evaluate, uh, calculate some of sales as if we're looking at these dates right there, right? And so we say, okay, calculate creates an altered filter context based on our second argument or our as if or our set filter argument. So get the natural filter context, use this as if to overwrite the date that in there and we just get this right here, right? We get the sales table, which then expands outward and gets joined with all the tables in the current filter context, which is just this one right here. So the sales table gets filtered to the year, date, and date key equals 2018, 1, 1, 18, and 18, 0, 1, 0, 1. So we only end up keeping these rows, which is what you'd expect, because we only want the sales associated with the first, which is those right there, okay? And sure enough, uh, if we add those two numbers up, we get 65, which is what we've got right there. Uh, for what it's written, I'm gonna show it here, but when this is done, the filter context resets in case there's any additional code out there, but there's not, so really what we care about is a 65. That's how we get that number right there, okay. Uh, that's cool. Lastly, I want to show you what it looks like here for the grand total, just because um, the grand totals can be a little hard to understand. Although fundamentally, they're actually pretty simple. All a grand total is, is a natural filter context with kind of nothing in it, right? So the, for each one of these cells, the natural filter context is populated by the date, right? But for this grand total, well, there is no date. So the natural filter context starts out empty, right? So if we get the last date and last year, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and just do these both at the same time. Uh, in reality, it gets done one by one, but I think you sort of get the idea. When I get the last date, I get the calendar table or the date. Um, I get this calendar table, but I look at it through the lens of the current filter context. Well, the current filter context has nothing in it, right? So when I go ahead to try and filter, well, nothing happens. So I end up getting the whole thing, right, for both of these. So when I get the, the max of the date, I'm gonna end up getting the maximum for all dates, which is this 1, 1, 2018. And when I take the max of the year, well, that's the max for all years, which is 2018. Okay, that's how I get the last date of 1, 1, 18 and the last year of 2018, right? So now I've got my two variables. I go ahead and generate my as if calendar. So uh, all brings in a calendar ignoring the current filter context, or in this case, it doesn't really matter because the 
the natural or the current and natural filter context are the same thing in this case have nothing in them but if there was it would bypass it so we get the entire calendar table and we go ahead and filter adds our little x column to it right? right this is just the right way of thinking about it right so for the calendar table we add this column where we check to see hey uh for the cells last date and last year the last date being 1 2 18 and the last year being 2018 check to see if each row's date and year is either less than or equal to that date and equal to that year right and what we find is that for these first two rows well the the day is indeed less than 20 uh, 1 2 2018 right but the year is incorrect right so these both of these rows the 30th and the 31st they, they might be part of some other two date calculation but not a year to date calculation because the year says what well, has to be equal to the cells uh, current year now here up here it's easy to think about what the cells current year is um, in the grand total it's a little bit harder and you know what we saw is that all we did was um, get the entire calendar table and just say hey what was the last date in it that's that's sort of what happens right there so we end up getting whatever the last date in the calendar table is okay or the last year in the calendar table so because of that uh, we end up getting all the days that are uh, less than 1 2 2018 but also part of the year 2018 right which is the first and the second so we go ahead we keep those rows right there right and we say all right now we're going to return our calculate uh, sum of sales as if we're looking at those days down there as if uh, as if we're looking at the the as if calendar right so calculate says let's create a new filter context let's uh, alter it by using our as if statement it takes this empty filter context and just sticks this guy right in there right the sales table gets expanded to include all of our calendar tables all of the columns on a one side of a one to many relationship right the date primary key date and year and then uh, the DAX engine is going to say all right look at all the tables inside of the current filter context right and one by one interjoin them with our copy of the table well there's only one table in the current filter context we interjoin it with our sales table our expanded sales table and we say all right only keep the rows where the uh the calendar year the calendar date and the calendar date primary key are equal to uh these rows right there so we only end up keeping these rows okay so we filter down our sales table and we get 115 which is how we get 115 down there and uh that is as uh, as hard as it gets now you could write um better year to date measures that are more bulletproof that will work under more complicated situations uh, but I think just to learn the basics of, of what it's doing I think this is sort of a good place to start so um, I do hope that was helpful and I will see you next video